Welcome, welcome. Welcome to Wellness Wednesday. We are talking about spring allergies today. I'm going to give it just a minute. Just a minute to get all of my stuff situated and um, make sure that you are ready to go. So I posted the question yesterday in the group um, because I've, I've seen two themes running. Spring allergies, which always happens this time of year, and then also post-COVID syndrome which is like a real thing. So just like Epstein-Barr virus, Lyme disease, all of those things have long-term effects on the human suit. So does COVID if you've been exposed to COVID or, or had the COVID virus. So um, it looks like overwhelmingly the group wanted the allergies. So if you have post-COVID issues, we can do another episode on that next week. Another episode, another Wellness Wednesday video, if you will. I'm in podcast recording mode, so... So I hope everyone is doing okay. I'm using something called StreamYard. So if you click the link and allow StreamYard to see you, then I'll be able to see your names if you ask a question. Um, if not, I do also try to keep my phone open so that um, I can check those questions for you or at least call you by name, right? But one of the things that I found interesting when I was asking is that um, Kathleen said, I wish there was something that really, really worked for allergies. And there is, guys. I used to be a daily um, allergy medication user, and I would switch back and forth between Allegra and the other one, I can't remember, but the non-drowsy formula. And then sometimes I still had to take Benadryl at night. Uh, that was over 10 years ago. I don't have spring allergies anymore. I don't have fall allergies anymore. I can look at a cottonwood blooming and appreciate the um, kind of magical floating you know, little bits of cotton that comes down. It doesn't bother me. I can touch my car when it's green, even though it still gets on my nerves because it gets my hands gross, but it doesn't bother me. It is possible not to have seasonal allergies. And in fact, even though it seems normal to have seasonal allergies, it's actually really not. It's common, but it's not normal, okay? So if you have started to feel that little bit of spring allergy stuff, the cough and runny nose and all of those things, then it's that time of year, friends. Spring allergies are in the air, and so are allergy symptoms. And of course, given our current climate, every sniffle or sneeze or God forbid you cough, people, you know, kind of side eye you like, oh, darn, you know, like, mm, does she have COVID, right? So it's, it's really tough to have allergies, period. But anytime we're still, and I think I said this last year when we talked about allergies, but we're like in a pandemic state, it makes it worse. So let me know in the comments which one is worse for you, fall allergies or spring allergies, okay? Um, I'm going to give you some natural tips to help in the short term and then how you get rid of them in the long term because masking your symptoms over and over and over again just leads to more stagnation and more sickness, okay? Tara said, yes, thanks to you, even my anti-holistic natural remedy guy is not using Zyrtec or Zyrtec's the other one I was trying to think of. It's been so long since I've even had it like in, <laughs> had it anywhere. I didn't remember, but yes, Zyrtec fall as well. So these, these things will work in fall as well. Um, I don't talk about fall allergies like in the fall as much because I just don't get as many questions about them. Um, but you can search allergies in the group and there'll be all kinds of stuff. I also, because I know it's hard, you might be watching on your phone, you might be listening in the car, whatever. I made a PDF for us this morning um, so that after this, I will add the PDF into the file section of the group and it's gonna have a checklist of the things that I'm talking about today. So, all right, seasonal allergies are, we're gonna talk the science first so you understand where it comes from, but seasonal allergies are something called an IgE, as an elephant, mediated inflammatory disorder, right? Um, whereas if you know anything about like food allergies and food sensitivities, those are IgG mediated. So spring allergies happen when you encounter something like pollen, dust, mold, right? Or something like that, that the body reacts to. And so it starts to release tons and tons of immunoglobulin E, IgE antibodies, right? And this sets off a response that leads to the symptoms that you're experiencing. Your body is trying to flush everything out. Um, and that includes something called a histamine release. Your body releases histamines, which is why you hear allergy meds sometimes called antihistamines, or I want to say it all Texan style, antihistamines, right? <laughs> but antihistamines, right? And histamine makes, like I said, everything run to get the hell out of your body, right? Your nose is running, trying to flush it all out. Your eyes are watering, trying to flush it all out. This might cause your ears to um, clog up. If you don't have good drainage pathways, then your lymph system might clog up. A lot of times that happens 
around the face and jaw and neck. So in the short term, you have coughing and you have sneezing and you have runny nose, you have watery eyes, but in the long term, so left untreated or just mask, if you're just masking the symptoms, whether you're using Allegra and Zyrtec and Benadryl or you're using some of the natural remedies that I'm gonna talk about today, if you're masking your symptoms in the long term, you have increased inflammation increased inflammation in your body, specifically landing on your mucosa. And we have mucosa in lots of different areas, right? It's kind of the inside lining of all the cavities of the body. The digestive tract is wrong one, but you can also think of things like the sinuses, the inside of the mouth, the, directly inside the nose, ears, the vaginal canal, all of those places, right? So what all of that means for you or your kiddo, right, is that if you have a seasonal allergy, you also likely have food sensitivities happening. And often they either play off of each other or the food, the, the seasonal allergies lead to, because we have the inflamed um, and hypersensitive mucosa, the food allergy or vice versa, okay? So I kind of dropped this bomb in the beginning, but I'll tell you again, seasonal allergies are not normal. They are not just a part of life that you have to deal with. Um, a lot of people follow sort of a similar trajectory, a similar path. They start with seasonal allergies as kids, right? And maybe this is you. Started with seasonal allergies as kids, depending on when you grow, grew up, whether it was popular or not to put tubes in ears, you may or may not have had tubes, right? And then you probably had a history, a long history of strep throat, tonsillitis, those kind of things. So you may or may not, depending on, because it goes in and out of popularity, you may or may not have had your tonsils and maybe your adenoids removed. Then generally you have acne as a teen, right? Um, and sometimes in that sort of birth to teenage years, there's some kind of asthma or chronic asthma thrown in. Um, as adults, generally women have trouble getting pregnant and then often acne returns in their 30s or 40s kind of out of the blue, right? Those are the, the women that call me and they're like, oh my God, I have not had this acne, acne this bad since I was 16. What the hell is going on, right? Um, so again, I'll say it's, it's common for people to follow this project trajectory, but it's not normal. normal. So allergies are not a thing to be squashed, kind of like inflammation, right? Allergies are a sign that something is going on in your human suit, right? So one of the big roots, and allergies have many roots, just like anything else. There's not one cause of allergies, right? But one of the big roots I see in people is the digestive tract. So that's what I'll focus on for the long-term healing strategy today. Um, and then the short-term strategy, I'm just gonna give you some things to do, right? So long-term healing strategy. And I know it seems odd that your digestive system is where would be connected to your seasonal allergies, but it is. That's where your immune system lives. And your immune system is what is responsible for all of the gunk pouring out of your face, right? <laughs> so it, the digestive system is also the primary gateway of things coming from the outside of your body to the inside of your body, okay? Sure, it can be absorbed through your skin, the capillaries in your skin. It can be absorbed through the, the mucosa in your nose, perhaps, um, or other areas. But the primary way is things you put in your mouth absorbed through the digestive tract. That's the biggest window of things to get into your body. Um, so leaky gut comes first, okay? So leaky gut is something that is present in anyone with seasonal allergies. And what happens, What the reason why they call it leaky gut is the gut lining becomes permeable. So if it's like this and it's only letting certain things through in the cracks in my fingers, then a leaky gut becomes more permeable and it lets bigger chunks through. All sorts of things leak through. Um, and if you combine that with, you know, like not chewing your food well or eating food that you're sensitive to, then you have a really big problem and your immune system does its job. You can't blame it for doing its job. And it starts the attack. So most of the time, healing the gut reduces the inflammation in the body and then heals allergies for good. And often a sign that your because uh, everyone has some level of leaky gut, often a sign that maybe you're backpedaling in your health a little bit is that maybe you start to get allergies back again, okay? So conventional method is just to mask it with symptoms, Allegra, Zyrtec, every day, all day, right? Even a lot of natural approaches, mask it with things, and I'll tell you what, what you can take, kerosene with bromelain, dehis, dehis junior, um, and I'll give you some links to where you can find that. Um, but what generally happens is taking these medications long-term, first of all, give me a thumbs up if you know that these medications are not made for long-term use. And maybe you take them long-term anyways, right? And a lot of doctors prescribe them long-term and they're just not made for long-term use, right? So 
many people see, I see take daily allergy medication for years and years and years and years. And then they have all, this whole stack of effects from that medication long term. And without too deep on the side effects, um, it could be feeling drugged, sleepy, brain fog, and then bigger consequences like blurred vision, nausea, enlarged prostate, chronic yeast infections, candida, all of these things, right? So if you can avoid taking allergy medication, absolutely do, okay? So usually when I say don't take allergy medication, I hear I absolutely need allergy relief right now, Audrey, and I don't want to be dumped up on medication, and I don't want it to make me sleepy. I don't want to have a hangover the next morning, and I don't want to watch my kiddos suffer either. So here are some things that you can take. Number one, kerosene with bromelain. Kerosene is an extract from plants, right? And it works to calm the immune system. It's also a zinc ionophore. And if you are familiar with some of the holistic remedies and holistic prevention for the pandemic, um, and also some of the treatment to shorten the lifespan of, of, of your um, symptom period, if you will, with the pandemic virus, Kerosene with bromelain is a beautiful thing to take because it is a zinc ionophore and it helps to rebuild your zinc stores, which in turn helps your immune system either recover faster or prevent better. So you can find this both in a swallowable capsule or for kids, there's something called Dehist Junior and it's in a little chewable cap. Now, when I used to have allergies, I used to use the Dehist Junior because I felt like it worked faster. So when I started switching from allergy medication to more natural natural ways, I would take the Dehist Junior because I could keep it in my purse. It's a little crunchy tablet. It doesn't taste bad. In fact, it kind of tastes good. Um, and I could just take it immediately when the symptoms started coming on rather than taking it preventively. They also have a capsule. So if that's more your, your bang, then totally do that. Another thing you can do is butter burr, B-U-T-T-E-R-B-U-R. Butter burr is an herb and you can either do it in a tea or you can get it in a pill form, a capsule. Um, they call it butter burr, but there is nothing buttery about it, right? <laughs> um, and they, they call it butter burr because they used to wrap butter in it, right? In the old like wild, wild west days. And so the extracts are really great for relieving fever, nasal allergies, headaches, and it works like an antihistamine without that drowsy side effect. Um, it also doesn't have that speedy effect. So if you're somebody who, and there are people who take Benadryl and it makes them hyper, um, it doesn't give you that effect either. And then stinging nettle. So stinging nettle, if it grows natively where you are in North America um, or anywhere, but I think it's only in North America, check me on that, um, it can really benefit you. And it's really cool how that works. Um, if you are looking for herbs and you have a whole bunch of herbs that do the same thing. And there are lots of herbs that do the same thing. Then one way to decide if you're not familiar with muscle testing for yourself, one way to decide is to figure out which ones grow nearest to you, right? So if you have the choice between something that grows in, in North America and you live in North America, or let's I'll use me as an example, something that grows natively in North Texas versus something that might be an Ayurvedic herb, you know, been used for 5,000 years, but is grown in Southeast Asia, then generally the native to my area works the best. Okay. So um, stinging nettle is available in a tea or pill form. You want to take it for eight weeks on, two weeks off, eight weeks on, two weeks off. Okay. Um, and then things that can help you to heal your gut, to start that process, vitamin D3 plus K2 and a healthy dose of omega-3. So we're talking like three to 5,000 milligrams per day. So many people um, reach out to me and they say, oh, I'm taking a thousand milligrams of omega-3 and it's not working because that's not near enough, near enough, three to five times that easily. Okay. Sometimes even more. So let me pop in and see if there's questions and I'll get a sip of water. Fall and spring equally, fall. Um, is there a connection between allergy inflammation and RA and heart disease stemming from overall body inflammation? In short, yes. So um, in short, it all kind of stems from the same roots or it can stem from the same roots. So it feels like this question, there could be um, dairy issue here. Um, that could totally be a problem that all that would connect all three of those things. Um, I would say working on again, you know, I think I said this, you were in my last my other call this morning um, for autoimmune revolution, but I would work on energy and drainage first and then move into immune support 
um, and modulating that immune system because the immune system is going to shed things. And if you don't have your drainage pathways managed, um, if you don't have your mitochondria functioning well, then you're going to have a whole lot of detox symptoms. It's going to be really uncomfortable. So if you're not, we're going to talk about poop for a minute, everyone. So y'all be ready. If you're not pooping two to three times a day, then your body is stagnant and stagnation breeds sickness. And then sometimes it breeds sickness that leads to inflammation. Sometimes it just leads to inflammation. Um, so that's definitely the place to start. And then the next question is what if someone needs more to heal the gut? Um, so it would, I, I would put that on an individual case. So sometimes um, if we've already done nutrition, we've already worked on drainage, then usually we start, there's an order of operations to healing the body. Do you guys remember order of operations from like grade school math? There's one of those for what I do, right? So you start with energy and drainage, and then you move on to the immune support. And then you move on to detox, parasites, molds, heavy metals, and then you give the immune system more support and then you're in maintenance mode, okay? So if somebody needs more work to heal the gut, then we either spend longer in that gut healing phase or sometimes we have to back up. Sometimes we've missed a phase and we didn't spend as long as we needed to in the phase two immune support or like phase one energy and drainage. So I hope that makes sense. And Tara, feel free, um, since you're an autoimmune revolution participant, you can reach out to me directly and I'm happy to answer those questions for you. So let's talk nutrition for spring allergies because nutrition is a big part of this stuff. Actually, yeah, we'll talk nutrition first. Okay, so sometimes supplements can be cost prohibitive. And again, you can't out supplement a bad diet. So using dehist and all of these things, they're really great tools, but often you're fighting an uphill battle. Sometimes you're fighting an uphill battle even with Zyrtec and Allegra, right? They stop working. That's why the doctors have you switch from Zyrtec and then take Allegra for a month and then go back and forth, right? To keep the body guessing. So there are some things that you can do that both work to, they serve to heal the gut and stop allergies. The biggest one is stop dairy. So if you have allergies and you eat dairy, Dairy is a problem for you, okay? That's gonna be one of your root causes. Dairy causes a mucus reaction in everyone. For some people, it's really big. And for some people, it's really little. And it's not the lactose either, friends. It's usually the casein. So you wanna make sure that you say no to dairy. Try it for three to five days. Make sure you get rid of all the dairy, cheese, milk, yogurt, all the things, butter. Um, and then see if it makes an improvement. Maybe your medication starts working better. If you're taking Zyrtec or Allegra, maybe your natural remedies start working better. Maybe you can switch off that yucky, uh, you know, uh, allergy medication and switch to something more natural, or maybe you don't need the natural stuff anymore. Just saying no to dairy. The second thing you can do is eat more foods that contain quercetin. So that's like things like onions, apples, um, pineapple, berries, buckwheat, citrus fruit, right? All of those things contain either quercetin or bromelain, which work together. They have a symbiotic relationship. They work together for you to be able to heal the body. And then another one is to eat more vitamin C. So red bell peppers are a good source, a good savory source for this, um, as well as citrus fruits, okay? This time um, last year, I was interviewed by O Magazine in regards to uh, essential oils for spring allergies. And on the cheat sheet that I'm going to add here. There is a whole cheat sheet and it links to that article. Um, but three of my favorites to keep on hand for allergies are lemon, lavender, and peppermint. Hopefully y'all can see those. Lemon, lavender, and peppermint. And there's a couple different ways you can do it. You can apply them in a roller blend. So equal parts. So you might do 10 drops, 10 drops, 10 drops, lemon, lavender, and peppermint. Fill it the rest of the way up with some grapeseed oil, some fractionated coconut oil, whatever works. Um, and then use it in a roll-on blend, right? Um, and you can also use them in a diffuser at night. Although I like to switch the peppermint out for eucalyptus radiata at night because I find the peppermint too energizing. Um, and even if you don't have spring allergies, it smells wonderful. Um, I often get asked about what brand to use. I like Young Living, but anyone who tells you that Young Living is the end-all be-all and the only brand is wrong, period. Um, and I don't say that people are wrong, period, very often. Um, oh, the UPS man's coming, so the dogs. <laughs> UPS man every day at this time. So, um, they're going to bark. 
So what we can do about that is of course to um, use that in your roll on. You can also put it directly on your skin. That works beautifully as well. Um, what I was just saying is that anybody who uses um, or who says that Young Living is the end all be all is simply just wrong. They're not well educated. They might mean well, but they're not. So Do doTERRA is a really good brand. Plant Therapy is a good brand. Mountain Rose Herbs has a good brand. Anything that is certified organic is also a good brand. Um, I like um, Young Living, like I said, is something that I've used for a long time, but I also have these other brands in my cabinet as well. The next thing you can do is energy work for spring allergies. So sometimes when we have allergies, our, we're so plugged here in our sinuses, right? So there's a couple things that you can do, one of which is to work on your energetic points in and around your face. So you can tap above the eyebrows, you can tap under the sinuses, you can tap on the side of the head, you can tap under the nose, under the chin, and then don't forget to tap here and that will start to bring things down. Another one of my favorite tricks is to take your thumb, I hope my thumb's clean, and put it on the roof of your mouth. Right here. And then you're just gonna push up a couple times, three or four times, and that sh gently shifts the facial bones and can drain those sinuses and provide you some relief if things get stopped up. Um, one more point is the neurolymphatic points that are under your clavicle. So you find your clavicles here and there's a little notch and you can just massage them. So you can do this without oils. I always like to give you tools that you can do without oils or you can amp these things up by adding essential oils to them. All right. So <laughs> Tara says our dog should meet, right? Like the, the poor UPS man, he had to actually like come get a package yesterday and um, it took me three minutes to calm the dogs down. And then I finally step out and he was like, I think your dogs were gonna kill me. And I was like, I don't know what their problem is. Like you bring good things, right? You bring me my Amazon shipments and who knows what that was, but yeah. So um, it's totally, totally a thing. So um, let me make sure that I covered everything. Nutrition, yes. Essential oils, yes. Let me know if you guys have any questions while I'm reviewing this. I'm on this handout, um, I'm gonna give you this link. Oh, I can't post comments in the group, okay. When I get done, when I close here, I'm gonna give you the link. It's got a checklist with links for the essential oils, for the O Magazine, for Steam, Nettle, Butter Burr, Bromal or Queer Seat and with Bromelene, Dehis, Dehis Jr. There's a link to click to take you to my full script um, where you can get the practitioner grade supplements because oftentimes if you're not super careful on Amazon, you're getting expired stuff or stuff that hasn't been kept in the proper temperature. Um, and so it can often be a, a lower strength of what you actually need. Um, as always, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. I would love for you, love, love, love for you to not have to suffer with allergies. So the things we're doing right, right, right away is getting the cure seat in the DHIST or the DHIST Jr. I like DHIST Jr. Um, we are getting rid of dairy at least on a three to five day trial. And it's not hard. Like there are so many good vegan cheeses that you don't even, uh, we don't, we don't eat dairy and we don't even miss dairy. Let's see, I have a dry cough in the last year from drainage. So you're, can you explain a little bit more? Are you experiencing, you've experienced a dry cough for a year? And then I'd like to know if you have your tonsils and adenoids um, and if you eat dairy or gluten. Those are three things that would be helpful to know. You are non-dairy, awesome. Do you eat gluten? I hope that's the same person telling me that you're non-dairy because it just says Facebook user. So sometimes that um, throws me off, but let me see if I can see you. See you, see you. Whoop, I can hear me. I Kathleen, Kathleen, you are non-dairy. Okay, awesome. You're not off gluten. So I would suggest often people who are sensitive to dairy are also sensitive to gluten. Now this sensitivity doesn't have to be permanent. Usually it's a gut healing issue. So I would consider adding something like some reishi spores or I think I have some because I ordered some from a client yesterday. Um, no dairy, no gluten. Okay. So you probably just have some gut healing to do. This product CT Spore, um, if you're looking for to support that gut healing, to help heal those allergies, I would try that. I would also wonder if there are other symptoms, like maybe you're having joint pain, um, maybe you're taking a medication that can lead to dry throat um, or itchy throat. Do you have your tonsils and adenoids? I think I asked that, but I don't know. I'm not sure which one um, you are having. You are 
which one the no answer was. If you don't have tonsils and adenoids, and I'll take a sip while we wait. Often I get asked what this little doohickey is in my water. Can y'all see it? It is a portable water filter. Isn't that neat? So it takes out um, chlorine, it takes out fluoride, and it remineralizes um, water that's been filtered. Isn't that fun? And they're super cheap. And you just change it every three months. So that's super fun. Okay, so you do have your tonsils and adenoids. So what I would be looking for is some kind of root cause inflammation, um, a root cause for inflammation. So it might be that you have candida. Tara, if you have well water, this thing is amazing. Um, so it might be that you have a candida or um, SIBO or mold exposure or mold growth. Oftentimes those little tickles in our throat are some kind of secondary exposure. Usually not a virus. We're usually looking at a mold that needs to be detoxed. It could be that you were exposed to, or you live in a place where there's a lot of, like near the forest, right? Where there's a lot of mycotoxins. Um, so that would be what I would look to detox. But before you detox mold, you have to, have to, have to make sure your energy and drainage pathways are moving. So if you will, um, on Friday, when I have free office hours Friday, send me a direct message from that post and we'll work through some of these steps together and I'll get you an answer specific to you for your dry cough because it's going to be different for everyone, okay? So I'm going to make sure I give you an answer that works. So if we don't have any extra questions, I'm going to add the PDF right now to the Facebook group and I hope this, that you found this helpful. Um, again, if you have any additional questions, if you're watching it on the replay, please put them in the notes. If you need one-on-one -on -one help, jump into free office hours Friday and send me a message and we can work through things that are really specific to your case. Okay. I hope you all have a great rest of your Wednesday. Thanks for hanging out with me. Be well.